How is everybody doing? I hope everything's going good. Um, what we're going to talk about today in this video is biodiversity at risk. We're going to be discussing the six primary ways in which biodiversity is lost and also try to put the connection together between biodiversity loss and extinction. I'll do the best I can to try to get you guys to see um, how those two things are related. Okay, so um, this first one, it talks about biodiversity at risk and really the majority of it is talking about extinction here. Okay, so what's the current extinction rate versus the natural background extinction rate? Okay, so really the current extinction rate talks about it being 100 to 1,000 times greater and it says the natural background extinction rate is about one to five species per year. So most scientists would probably contribute that current extinction rate being so much higher due to human activity. Okay, and you're gonna see um, the majority of really all, all six of the um, ways in which biodiversity is lost, the ones that we're gonna look at, really they're all tied to humans. Okay, so, so that's just a little information for you. So some kids are always like, well, how many things um, would go extinct regardless of humans? Most scientists think one to five per year, okay? Um, in 2009, you can see the U.S. Uh, classified over 1,300 species as endangered or threatened. Later on, we'll learn about the difference between endangered and threatened. And then the Living Planet Index, what is that? It just says summarizes global population trends for certain terrestrial, okay, terrestrial is just on land, guys, um, and freshwater and marine species. Okay, so, um, the, you know, do we know, every, you know, how many of every, you know, single species on the planet that there is? No, but they do their best to try to come up with some um, estimations. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep on moving. The next one you're gonna see here, okay, is talking about, you know, just the causes. We're not gonna talk about this slide a lot because we're gonna get into those, but those are the six. Okay, so our first one here, it's called, called habitat fragmentation slash loss. Okay, so really it's just how is habitat lost. Okay, so as you can see in the picture, it's, you know, very simplified um, display there. Okay, it just shows you the original habitat and what happens as you take away parts of it. Okay, so that would be your fragmentation. Habitat loss eventually is at the bottom when you lose the majority of it. I mean, you can see right here, it's the greatest cause of biodiversity loss. Okay, so make sure you know that and you remember it, okay? And if you think about this particular um, cause right here, it should make sense, okay? How is the connection between this and humans? As the human population grows, uh, we need to expand. We need to take, a, a, you know, wild wildlife and, and their habitat and we need to move them. We need to displace them uh, because we want uh, that, as it shows here, this original habitat uh, that's, you know, we need that land to grow crops, to raise livestock, to build homes. So as the human population continues to grow and expand, this becomes a bigger problem. That's really why it's the greatest cause. Okay? And again, it's linked to us. Sorry guys, I got a little bit of a sinuses and allergies. So hopefully if you don't hear me sniffing too much, uh, but I apologize. Um, the causes of biodiversity loss and extinction of species. Okay, it's the same title as you can see, and we're on number two. We're talking about invasive species. This isn't really tied so much to human um, human population growth, but it is tied to our activities. Okay, and primarily um, travel and shipping. Okay, so first of all, what is an invasive species? Sometimes you may hear them termed exotic or non-native. So it says in the definition, there are species that do not normally occur in a specific area and whose introduction does or is likely to cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. Okay, so exotic and non-native, they're not always a bad thing. When you have an exotic or non-native species that becomes a problem either for the environment or for the economy, that's when it's turned into invasive species. Okay, so quagamussel, as you can see here, they got a little picture of it right here with an Arizona quarter. Okay, that's because these guys are a big problem here in the state of Arizona. Okay, they're found in a lot of um, lakes, okay, unfortunately, where they're not supposed to be and they cause a lot of problems. This is one of the reasons uh, you'll see signs if you go to, if you ever been to Lake Pleasant or your parents' boat or uncle, aunt, grandparents, whatever, um, they make a big deal about making sure you 
clean off your boat before you leave and clean your boat um, before you enter the water and that's because of these little quagga mussels um, and the reason they're an invasive species is because they reproduce really fast and they can outcompete native species or other um, aquatic organisms in the lake for habitat and food okay so what they do is they eventually can squeeze out those native species the other thing is they become a um, economic problem okay so a lot of the um, filtering systems and pipes that carry water from the lakes they get filled with these things and they clog them up they get on um, boat motors so that's an example the quagga mussel is a perfect example of how um, an invasive species okay or an exotic species can turn into an invasive species and be a huge problem and you guys are going to see a good example of this uh, in a video and an animation you guys watch um, you'll answer a few questions looking at this quagga mus mussel all right so let's go ahead and keep on moving forward next one is over harvesting I think this one is pretty easy to understand the one part of it the one part of it being like okay over harvesting of trees it's affecting the trees over harvesting of this particular fish yes it's affecting their numbers but if you talk about biodiversity lost and over uh, over harvesting I want you guys to understand how this has um, sort of a, like a domino effect so these trees that are now gone um, they supplied habitat and they supplied um, food sources for lots of different organisms within this ecosystem just like this fish okay um, there were probably you know it ate certain fish and other fish ate it so it's going to have an impact on that entire ecosystem also so make sure you understand over harvesting it affects the overall biodiversity of the entire ecosystem because like in the food webs when we talked about that and we talked about the interdependence okay and we talked about interdependence with biodiversity is no organism stands alone okay they all indirectly or directly rely on one another so this affects the individual species being over harvested but also it affects all the other species that are in um, that particular ecosystem all right all right number four pollution uh, you know I think this one again like uh, over harvesting and habitat loss is pretty pretty easy to understand um, if you're releasing harmful chemicals like fertilizers, pesticides, uh, oil, all of those things like you see here, this is an example of uh, animal waste being run off. This would be agricultural, so your pesticides and your fertilizers. We will learn in the third unit, okay, the third framework and the fifth framework, how this runoff affects bodies of water okay, and how it has a adverse effect on biodiversity. Okay, so uh, we're not going to dive into it too much in this particular unit, but make sure you understand that pollution okay, is obviously going to impact a, uh, an ecosystem. Okay? It's going to cause certain species to decrease in numbers, which will have, a, again, a domino effect like over, um, over harvesting in the rest of the ecosystem. Okay? But this one we'll get into a lot more in further units. Um, this next one here is human population growth, and again, you know, pollution, over harvesting, invasive species, all these things, they're really due to either human population growth or human activity. And so this one just talks about human population growth, but really all of them could be lumped in this one, uh, indirectly or indirectly. Um, so it talks about increased human population may lead to the following. We talked about it, the destruction and fragmentation of habitat, um, el elimination of living space. So if you're taking habitat, you're eliminating living space. Um, and why, okay, like they talk about the rainforest there, pasture lands, farms, urban areas. And again, this one, the last one should, be, should make perfect sense, leads to diminishing resources and increases competition. Okay, so you have less resources for um, more organisms to share, so you have increased competition. It makes it much more stressful. Okay, and the last one, climate change. Okay, we'll talk a lot more about climate change in the last framework, um, but as you can see here, um, you've got your polar bear and you've got the melting ice caps, very, you know, classic uh, photo use when people talk about climate change, okay? Um, but if you think about climate change as a whole, okay, not just the human aspect, but climate change has always occurred on planet Earth. It doesn't matter if we're here or not, um, climate changes regardless. Okay? And there have been species that have adapted and evolved, and there's been some that haven't been able to adapt and evolve to climate. Okay, climate change, you could be talking about with climate 
you know, more precipitation, less precipitation, hotter, colder, lots of different variables, and some species can adapt and evolve and survive, and some can't. So it's definitely going to have a um, impact on biodiversity. And as I said, some will become extinct. When we talk about climate change, biodiversity loss in humans, um, what a lot of scientists, um, what they point to is not that um, climate is changing, it's the rate at which it's changing. Okay, so most climate scientists will say that the, the rate of climate change is faster than ever because of, um, you know, primarily from us burning uh, fossil fuels and creating greenhouse gases. But again, um, anytime you're introducing um, any type of greenhouse gas from humans that changes climate, it's going to have an impact on biodiversity. Okay. And the last slide we've got here, guys, is talking about extinction. Okay, so how does extinction and biodiversity loss play together okay and hopefully it makes sense to you guys that if you have lots of biodiversity loss meaning you lose a lot of species okay what happens is then it becomes more difficult for that entire ecosystem to sustain itself so what happens a lot of times is when you get a lot of um, biodiversity loss you can start to get certain species go extinct. Okay? And I think you guys all know what extinction is. It just uh, occurs when the last remaining organism in a population dies. All right, what you do need to know is when it talks about um, endangered, threatened, okay, just understand that endangered means it's, it's an organism that is at serious risk of extinction. Okay, so this would be like, um, you know, really bad. Okay, threatened would be like bad, meaning it's likely to become endangered soon, and obviously this would be worst. Okay, worst case scenario, it goes extinct. So just under, understand, threatened is when um, you know scientists and researchers um, they start to see the signs of a dwindling population. Okay, and they are thinking to themselves, you know, this this species has um, the, the likelihood of the species becoming endangered soon is very high, so they'll put it on the threatened list. Um, and then if, they can, if that population continues to dwindle in size, um, that species can be classified as endangered. Okay? And then if it isn't preserved after that, one of the outcomes is extinction. Okay, so that's kind of how you differentiate endangered and threatened. Okay, and then mass extinction um, just talks about how, you know, most extinction guys takes you know some time you know climate if you're talking about the way things change on earth it's typically slow long periods of time if you're talking about changes in climates you're talking about um, the moving of you know uh, continents and and, and uh, tectonic plates and things like that it's a long process but you can have mass extinctions which typically occur um, in short periods of time okay so the classic example you guys um, you hear about is like uh, the dinosaurs, right? You have you know, the an asteroid or or a, or a meteorite, okay, hits Earth's surface, creates you know a huge change in Earth's, you know, all of Earth's systems in in a very short period of time, um, and it doesn't really give organisms the the time to adapt and evolve like they normally would to slower changes. So it can cause a lot of species to um, go extinct or, or die relatively fast. Okay, so that's what mass extinction is. All right, so make sure you guys understand, obviously, the, the six we talked about, which I think are pretty easy. Um, also, understand the difference between endangered, threatened. Okay, obviously, extinction, I think you guys know. And also understand how um, when we talk about biodiversity loss, okay, if you have a lot of biodiversity loss, if you have a lot of species dwindling in number, it can lead to extinction of species. Okay, so understand why we talk about extinction and biodiversity in the same video. All right, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, good luck with the work, and um, I'll see you in the next video.